Hello people, it's Cambridge results video finally. I know this Thursday was A-level results day and I want to congratulate anyone who got into the uni of their first choice. And if you didn't, honestly, it's not a big deal. In 10 years, you will not care whether it was an A or a B. For people who randomly stumbled across this video and have no clue who I am, my name is Julia. I'm studying in the UK at the University of Cambridge. I just finished my second year doing computer science. I haven't announced the results of my exams for either of the years, so Here's what I'm gonna do now. In my first year, my course was broken up like this. 50% was computer science, 25% was maths, and 25% was physics. All our written exams were in June. There were five of them, two for computer science, two for maths, one for physics. Here's the format that we got our grades in. As you can see, there was some practical work in physics. Now, a good time would be to mention British grading system. In most UK unis, you get a class at the end of each year. Sometimes it counts towards your final grade, sometimes it doesn't, like in Cambridge, and only the last year truly matters. The classes go like this. First is the best one, second and third. Second is usually broken into 2-1 and 2-2. Class boundaries vary from year to year. They try to make it fair like QMS system and then put them into a bell curve and kind of normalize. It also differs from subject to subject. Some might say if you get above 70%, that's it, you got a first. Others might say only 25% of the whole year group will get a first. And that's what computer science does. Okay, now let's concentrate only on computer science. I had a video about grade boundaries and so on and you can go and check it out. In my first year I got a 2-1. It was a bit sad because, you know, after A-levels when you're on top of your class every time and suddenly being like Ugh, in the middle, that wasn't good. The system is made in such a way that you compete with your peers. That can get quite intense because you have no idea whether you should be helping someone, whether you should be asking for help, whether you should be studying on your own and so on. As some of you may know, I nailed my A-level results in maths. I got 1200 in all 12 modules, so I was so ready to get my high 90s. Last year, two maths exams were the best. They were the ones that brought my grade up. And in the end, I only got 78%. Now, rule number one, do not compare it to A-level results. The system is designed in such a way as to not allow the majority of people to get anywhere close to 90. Getting above 75 is considered amazing. I think that is actually a good thing because so many perfectionists come to Cambridge with ideas of getting hundreds and A stars and so on. And then suddenly, you're shown that actually, like in real world, you'll never be able to finish the task completely. I used to be amazing at physics, I got my A star during A levels, but last year I got 60%. And like I was looking at it thinking, that would be a C, that would be so bad. And then I talked to other people who got 40 and 50 and yeah, it turned out to be kind of okay. Komsky was surprisingly in between maths and physics, but I still didn't even reach the 70% boundary. It still felt kind of nice because I had no experience in programming or any computer science theory prior to the university. And of course, as you do, I told myself in second year I'll definitely get a first. Mind you, by the way, that those results actually don't matter. Like you can get a third two years in a row and then get a first and then you'll be able to say I graduated with a first. When you graduate, you get a certificate that says you get a Bachelor of Arts from the University of Cambridge and your name. There isn't even a grade there, nobody will ever know. The only people who actually care about your intermediate grades are probably your parents, your friends, your director of studies who wants to see your progress and companies that you want to intern at. Uh, some of them ask for transcripts, some don't. This is my workplace, by the way. Okay, second year. This year was much more different, much more enjoyable, actually, I think. We had a wide range of subjects to choose from, but I didn't have my maths to rely on anymore. We had four exams, all for computer science, four days in a row, each lasting three hours. And here is a video of me describing my thoughts after the last exam on Thursday. So, it's the end of my second year in Cambridge. It was harder to revise because last year I already knew a lot with maths and, you know, maths is just great. With Komsky, it was just a lot of theory. You had to read and reread your notes thousands of times. And of course, with this head, stuff comes in, stuff comes out didn't work. Basically, if I could rate, I don't know my results yet, obviously, but if I could rate them, the first one was, it was good, it didn't have as much things as I wanted, so the stuff that I didn't want to come up, didn't come up, which is good. The stuff that I did want to come up, also didn't come up. It was some other stuff that I was very neutral about, but being neutral is not necessarily good, because that means you didn't even write that. Just generally, I was very nervous, my heart was like... And it's very hard to come down, let me tell you. It got the stress out of the way because 
from then onwards, I was like, oh yeah, that's how exams work. Because during the year, we haven't had a single opportunity to write a timed exam. I actually want to check whether in the end I get the grades that I hope so that I don't underestimate or overestimate. So for the first one, I think I got somewhere between 60 and 70. I calculated in raw marks, maximum I can get a 73 because, yeah. You can like start revising like now for, for next year, good luck, but then... The second one was much worse. I revised a lot for that one in particular and it had very nice topics. The second one, I really hoped it would bring my all my grades up. No, I think it was the worst. It was somewhere between 50 and 60. Yesterday was good, 65 to 75. And today, today was the best one. I'm so, so incredibly happy because today is like the most mathy paper. So yeah, in total it's 10 questions and you have to choose five. And yeah, I was like, maths, yeah. So if I did 90% of work, although like I feel like I did everything, but let's pretend I did 90 and then it's 90 of those 90, so it's 80. Paper six and paper five, which are the last two, will make everything so much better. In my second year, I also got a 2-1, which unfortunately was even lower than last year. This was quite shocking because I knew I was putting in more amount of work that I did before. I spent both of my holidays, both six weeks, Christmas and Easter, and of course all the weekends working. Frankly, I don't wanna dwell on it too much because I've seen it all. I've seen people get firsts, then fall to thirds, maybe get two twos, and then rise to firsts. Anything can happen. It's just crazy to think that three years of your life is summarized in one grade. Of course I want to get a first next year because that's actually the only way you can stay on for masters and of course I'm gonna try my best but there is dissertation. Next year we have three exams and a dissertation that counts as a quarter of our grade and I know that will be a huge pain. So I really hope that next year I'm gonna upload a video saying how happy I am with the grade that I got and how it was all worth it. I guess we just need to wait and see and I hope you'll be there to see it with me. I've read a couple of articles about people who got their A-level results and they were absolutely bad. They ended up not even going to universities and their life turned out to be amazing. So leave a comment down below if you had any experiences with getting grades that you were not satisfied with and how you overcame it. I think knowing that there are people who dealt with those problems, and of course we all did, come on, it's life, can be quite helpful. Uh, I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!